Hey guys, Sheila here with writing your first book. That's right. This is Sheila Texter, and this is the first time you've ever been here. I say welcome. Subscribe to my channel, like it, comment, share it. Every Wednesday and Friday, I am putting out content about writing, especially if you're writing your first book. But on Wednesdays, I have been reading through my first book that I wrote. And I've been kind of sharing my writing journey and sharing a lot of things that are going on, you know, and even, you know, in my writing journey. And then on Fridays, I have been reading out of How to Be Prosperous, which is my second book, which is the first series of a devotional. My plan is to have 12 of these, hopefully within a couple of years. I will have 12 of these, and they will be like a 12-month series, which you can still buy them individually, but I hope to eventually sell them as a set. So, today, though, I'm going to be reading out of this. I won't keep, I'm going to try my best not to be on here very long today, but if you've noticed, I have changed the name of my channel from Sheila's One Stop Coaching to writing your first book because I feel like that maybe, you know, people maybe are not understanding, you know, exactly what is the one-stop coaching, but it doesn't mean that I'm changing necessarily my content it or anything like that or changing basically what my goal is, but I was hoping maybe by changing that people will realize that this is also about writing. So I have wrote this book. It is in an ebook form. I have wrote a devotional. And also this, just the last two days, it is live on Amazon, is a little ebook, a little short read that I wrote and published. And it is called How to Be a Writer. You know, like this here says How to Be Prosperous. The other one says how to be a writer and it's like so you want to be a writer and what it is is about nine or ten great great full tips you know of in of encouragement of just um things that you need to know hold on just a second mm. Things that you will need to know on your journey when you first starting out. Now, you know, the book is not for authors that have already been through the process or for someone that already has two or three books under their belt because pretty much most of that's going to be stuff that you learn too along your way. But if you haven't put out a book in a long time, there's, there's a lot of new things going on. There are so many opportunities I mean, there is no excuse for us anymore if we want to write a book, if we want to see it published, if we want it out there for the world to buy. The, the traditional publishing, it's almost out the window. The newbies, the self-publishing, new authors, and you promoting your books and marketing your books and doing things like that. It's, it's an open field for anybody now. Really, it is in any area because we have so much access to the world through the internet and through media. So today we're going to continue on in reading uh, out of this book. I don't, I'm going to go uh, do some different things once we get through with this, but it may be another two or three weeks. I'm going to try to up my skills in teaching more and sharing more of a writing journey and things to do in your writing. But without further ado, we will go ahead and read this today. This is chapter eight, the word. This is in part three of New Beginnings. The name of the book is Life After the Mistake, New Beginnings, Sister Sheila Texter, or, you know, by Sheila Texter, but I am a minister. I'm an evangelist, a preacher, I'm a pastor's wife, I'm, a, I'm also a life coach. I have 
you know, I took some courses and things. I've got the certificates. I ain't made no money yet. I've not necessarily got hired to be nobody's coach. But I have coached a lot of people and helping them one-on-one, -on -one, you know, through Zoom, through messaging, uh, texting, just, you know, them reaching out to me. And so, you know what? I just want to be available. And if I can make money eventually, fine. If I don't, it's still fine because it all comes from God anyway. So I just want to make myself available. I want to be there for people and help them realize their gifts that awakens those callings, to help awaken those callings, and for you to take action and to start doing it. You know, we can always be learning. I am a student for life, but one thing that I learned is there comes a time that you kind of got to put learning aside and start doing. Now, you'll never really put learning aside. You'll always be learning, or you should. That's, that's, the, that's the mentality we should have. But there also comes a time that you need to start doing because if you're waiting for the perfect time, if you're waiting for this to be in line, or you're waiting till you learn all you need to know, you will never start. You will never start. You've just got to start. I'm about two and a half years into my writing journey, and I have just scratched the surface of the things that I'm learning. And I am so excited and looking forward to learning all the ropes and, and just learning more and more and how to market, how to grow, and how to uh, enhance my writing and add more more writing projects and more books, you know, to be out there to sell. But anyway, so here we go. Chapter 8, The Word. But be before every book or before every chapter, there is a, there is a, a book, a chapter, and verse. This was Daniel 10 and 12. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. The word came. December the 9th, 2017, will forever be sketched in our hearts. New beginnings. This next year will be a year of new beginnings. I knew I had heard from God. The next few weeks leading up to the new year and the natural world were exciting to say the least. As I began to share my word with close friends, I was introduced to the meaning of numbers. I uncovered that three and seven were among God's perfect numbers. And after sharing this on Facebook, a few people responded that the number eight meant new beginnings. Immediately hopping on the internet for confirmation, I found a little more information on the reason for the meaning. Even though the year was 2018, all I could see was the eight. It said that God created everything in six days. Then he rested on the seventh. And after seven comes eight. The new world had started, a new beginning. The number eight in the Bible represents a new beginning, beginning a new order or creation. I saw confirmation everywhere as so many new blessings were revealed and the new work began. On January the 1st, 2018, my journal, was, my journal writing was exploding with prophecy, speaking into our future resounding all the things that God has spoken to me. It was also the beginning of our third year since God had told me we wouldn't always be there. June would be a month that would tell all. I knew that change was in the air and we were about to see some things with our natural eyes. The Lord was still downloading his future plans into my spirit. and We decided to make a 30-day sacrifice no bread, no sweets, and no meats. I remember one of the things that God told me. He said, 
He said, when I do what I am going to do, it is going to be mouth dropping and mind blowing. I kid you not. It came just like that. Ask for double. I'm going to give it to you. This time was no different. I went to the Word to find out what God had intended for me. Since it was now the year 2018, oh, let me read this little scripture that's in the box. Zechariah 9 and 12. It kind of goes with that where God said he was going to give me double. It says in Zechariah 9 and 12, Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Man, what a promise. Since it was now the year 2018, I wrote down 18 things that I wanted God to double. During this exciting time, my heart expected harvest. I decided to have a meeting with some other lady ministers at my home. We shared our dreams and goals and we traded our written requests with each other with the purpose of praying specifically for those petitions. I shared with them the prophecy of the new year and they asked him for double. I asked them to pray that God would show us where we're supposed to go or what were we supposed to do. Not knowing it would be my last message preached at my old church. The title that I used for my sermon was New Beginnings. As I planned for my words, I looked for inspiration, and with it being a new year, my emails all seemed to be centered around new beginnings. And in Isaiah 43 and 19, another scripture that I put in here that's in a box. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Ye, or shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and river, uh, rivers and rivers in the desert. And then you see, I don't know, see January, the new beginning. I put that in the book because I actually used that that night that I preached. This picture came in an email. So with the help of our tech person at the church, I incorporated it into the message. Center in the message around this theme and the number eight. I was able to bring people into the vision that I was encountering. There were several passages of scripture that were very potent for me in this important time. Let me see how much longer this is and I may. No, it's almost there. I got one more paragraph. We'll go ahead and finish it today. Several events took place in that first month alone. We got new phones, upgraded after more years than I care to share. The church we attended started MIT meetings, ministers in training, and this was a great learning experience for all involved. My ladies, my ladies in ministry meeting was in January. Also, my daughter Vanessa Wheeler accepted her calling to preach this beautiful gospel. Being a minister myself and evangelizing when the opportunity came, it made my heart swell. Overjoyed was one of my many emotions in those days. So guys, I will be back next Wednesday to read chapter 9. I think there's like two or three more chapters in here. But Friday, Lord's willing, I will be back Friday. And I will be reading from How to Be Prosperous and sharing a little more on my writing journey. I am going to hopefully this week and next week finish up my second devotional. I've got about, I think, seven more days to write out. Then I will be sending that to my proofreader, to my editor, proofreader, my helper, my God sent. And we will start working on it. And hopefully in a couple of months, two or three months, I will have a second devotional out and ready to publish and sell. So guys, y'all have a great day. Have a great week. We just come through Easter weekend. Uh, this is 2021 in April. I'm just looking forward to the year. I'm looking forward to what God is doing. And my encouragement to you today, my challenge to you today, is to pray, stay close to God, seek His will, and don't waste any more time, guys. Whether you're 12, whether you're 20, whether you're 30, 50, 60, 80, don't waste, no, don't waste another day with no kind of goals. 
Don't waste another day without some kind of plan in your life that you see yourself something doing something this year um, in the kingdom of God. Uh, maybe doing a book, a song, something, a business. You know, just something you feel passionate about. Take that thing and run with it. Pray and seek God and ask Him to come in and give you clear direction. Clear direction. So guys, y'all have a great day. Have a great week. And I will see you back here Friday.